So today we're going to be taking a look at the Lee and Lee Galahad 2 LCD SL Infinity 360. Right, welcome back again guys. Um, there's a bit of a storm outside so hopefully you don't hear the wind battering off the windows but uh, today we'll be doing an unboxing of the this fantastic 360 cooler by um, Lee and Lee. Unboxing a quick installation, I'll show you how to set up the software and then I'll do a little kind of a benchmark on it showing you the performance of it. Let's get into it. Right, so here's the box for the Lee and Lee Galahad 2 LCD SL Infinity 360. You can also get this in a different variant with different fans, but it's cooled by an Acetec pump. And up the top here, it also tells us it comes with a six year warranty, which is superb in case you have any issues. So we'll just uh, get into this now and pop up on the side. A little bit of tape here, just holding the flap shut. And cut this with my knife, trying not to take my fingers off. Right, come on, and we get this shouldn't be this hard. <laughs> right, there we go. Right, now we're in, we're in, cracked it. Right, first off, we've got instructions. I'll probably tell you all the mounting gear and stuff that you get with this, which it does for the Intel and for the AMD type sockets, little spacers, different types of screws, and so on, the cables that come with it. The little controller and then sides all the actual instructions of how to mount it properly. And on the back, yep, some more instructions how to put the thermal paste on if you need to, uh, the cable and stuff, but I'm not going to bother with that because I'm going to show you how to do it, put it away. So, well, first things first, we've got this little bag here. So, this is the actual uh, what's this? This is the power cables um, for the fans. The, the, the power and RGB cables for the fans and also what looks like a power cable for the controller. So this is a little clip that goes into the side of the Infinity fans and then on the other end here we have two separate connections, one for the RGB and one for the power. And I'm actually going to show you something in a minute with a, a little kit that I've got. Um, this is a USB cable that goes into the side of the pump, USB Type-C and then a USB connection that goes onto the header in your motherboard and this is the uh, yep this is the SATA power that the basically goes into the side of the the pump as well in case you don't want to use the L Connect software um, you can actually hook it up using this if you want but we're not going to use this so kind of pointless even showing you this and then here we've got the actual controller that comes with the pump just pop this bag open, we'll see what's inside. So it comes with a 3M sticky pad, which is also magnetic, which will be good for mounting this inside the case somewhere. And SATA power on the bottom of this controller. It's going to need a SATA power supply. And at the side here, you can see the individual RGB and um, PWM sockets. So there's four of those, and in each of them, it can take four fans. So a total of 16 fans this thing can power up. But for me, I'm going to be using this. And there's a reason behind this. Um, this is the Unifan SL120 controller, which you, I believe you get with a three pack. But because of the setup that I have, I don't actually, I didn't buy a three pack. It was all individual reverse blade fans that I bought, which doesn't come with this. But you can see right away that the connection on the end of these cables is a combined cable, a combined connection, which has both RGB and um, PWM. And then the, the other end is a typical clip that goes into the fans. But the reason I bought this is because not only do I need the connections for the, the RGB for the fans, but also need a couple of spare connections for the RGB for the case lighting. Um, and if I pop this open, uh, hopefully I should be able to show you that. And because, um, in fact, you, there's not much difference when you hold these up side by side, but um, there, is, there is definitely a difference. On the side here you can see these new combined sockets which should keep things a lot cleaner but there is the two additional RGB connections which I'm going to use 
for controlling the light, uh, the RGB fans, sorry, the RGB lighting in the case, but because of the extra power this thing uses, it comes with two SATA connections. But uh, yeah, I'll get to wiring this up later on, but I thought I'd just explain why I'm using this controller rather than the one that comes with the, the AIO. In this bag here, we have the some of the mounting equipment. So we have a bracket here, which I believe is for the, the Intel setup. But of course I'm using AMD, so we won't be using that, but we'll show you anyway. And this is the AMD clips uh, bracket, sorry. So basically these, these will replace the, the existing brackets that's already mounted on a motherboard. I'll show you that in a minute. What else have we got in this bag? And then we have the the screws that tie the, the pump onto the, these brackets. And there should be two different types of these, so you need to pay attention to this, and I'll, I'll show you right away here. This is the AMD screw. You can see the little four dots that's on the end of it. This basically shows you that this is the AMD ones. And obviously you don't want to make a mistake. Um, I think if you do make any mistake, there's a possibility of you stripping the screws and then you would never get the, the tension and the force you need on the, the pump on the top of the CPU. So in here somewhere else, there should be the screws for the Intel installation. And I'll just get one of these out of the bag and I'll show you the difference. At the top of this, there is no little dots. So you shouldn't really go wrong. Uh, when installing this, but again I'll show you the, the AMD one just to make sure that you can see the difference. So the AMD one in the right and the Intel one in the left, and again the AMD one has the little dots that you can see. Let's put these back in the bag, keep them safe, and put the Intel ones to the side because I'm not going to need them. Here we have some screws and some washers for actually mounting the radiator, wherever you're going to mount it in your case. Plenty of those. And we also have a little bag here with some additional thermal paste and some spacers which you'll need for the Intel installation. I'm not going to need those. And a little spreader. Um, and off chance that you do need the, the additional thermal paste. Here we've also got some Vel Velcro straps to tidy up the, the tubes if you want to do that. But I'm hoping not to use these because I think they're a bit of an eyesore. What else have we got inside the packaging? Um, we have another bag here, and this is the, the the additional cables that will attach to the control unit that comes with the AIO. Just to uh, pop this open, we'll have an actual look. So there should be a USB header in the row, um, yep, which is in the bottom there. And then the USB type, uh, the micro USB connection. You'll hook this up to the motherboard, obviously. So again, pay attention to the amount of USBs you're going to need. Um, you may only have one USB header in your PC case, uh, sorry, on your motherboard, which means you may have to buy a hub. And I'm actually going to need uh, an internal hub. We also see here there's some splitter cables, which can hook up other RGB components as well. But we'll get to that when I install everything. And then on to the actual radiator itself. I'll just pop this out. Nothing else is in there. No. Everything is now emptied out of the, the packaging. And I'll just remove this plastic off the end of the pump. Stick that to the side. And on the bottom of the pump here you see the pre-applied thermal paste which is a nice touch and that little plastic protection cover around it to make sure you don't touch it. On the side here we have the two connections, the USB Type-C connection if you're using L-Connect 3 and then there's another connection if you don't plan to use L-Connect 3 but we're not going to go down that route, we will be using L-Connect 3 in my setup. And here we have a connection that goes to your AIO header on your motherboard to detect the speeds of the, of which the pump's running at. On the pump here we have 90 degree rotary connections which is nice, be able to position the hoses in, in a position to keep them nice and tidy and clean looking, plenty of flexibility in those, and that's pretty much all there is to the, the pump really. Now we'll just get the radiator out and right away you can see that the fans come already pre-installed so it saves you a little task 
but these are the SL Infinity fans. Again, you can get a different fans for this particular radiator and pump. But these ones come with the infinity mirrors on the side and the infinity mirrors around the actual hub of the, the fan blade itself, which look superb. Set up for a, an, a, an exhaust so the fans will blow through the radiator and on the end here you can see the connection that you'll use for hooking up the cable to the fans. So the radiator itself is 30mm thick, so plenty of performance, nice thick radiator, chunky. Uh, what else have we got? Uh, at the top here, if we can just position this to try and show you it, we have 45 degree rotary fittings. Again, another nice touch by Lee and Lee. Should allow you to swivel the, the hoses into position, which suits your case. Keep everything clean and tidy looking, hopefully. But yeah, it's again a nice wee feature by Lee and Lee. So ho I'm hoping to position the radiator like this on the side of my case. I'm toying with doing this. And the pump will be positioned in this position with the hoses to the bottom, which is the, the preference by Lee and Lee, if you look at their documentation. Now we'll move on to the additional fans I've bought for the case. And these, again, are the SL Infinity 120 fans. This particular one's a reverse blade fan, and I've actually bought four of these in total. So three of these will um, act as exhausts. Oh, sorry, three of these will act as intakes on the side of the case and one at the bottom. So we've got four of those in total. We've got the three exhaust fans on the radiator and then another one exhaust fan to the back of the case. Just to kind of let you know how I, how I plan to have everything set up. So in the box, again, we have the fan. And there's not really much to talk about here. They're, uh, they're obviously identical to the ones that are on the radiator. But you can see the, the usual features with the infinity fans and mirrors to the side. The nice connections for daisy chaining these. Get LED strips around the edges here and then we've got infinity mirrors on the end. And the infinity mirror on the hub of the fan itself. This is a cable that comes with the single fans. I'll just show you but... I'll be using the, the other ones I've got with the, the other controller that I bought. So if they've got an RGB connection here, three pin RGB connection, and then a PWM power connection. You can hook these up to your motherboard if you want, or some sort of fan controller. But as mentioned a minute ago, I'll be using the, the other one that I bought. I don't think there's anything else to the box. I'm just making sure I haven't lost anything little pack of screws, four screws, for installing them. little instruction booklet of how to hook the cable up to it and how to daisy chain them. And then some spare protective uh, covers, just maybe in case you're planning to take these back out and you want to protect them. Avoid getting any scratches in these mirrors. And I think that's about that. I don't think there's anything different. What I'll do is I'll, I'll get another one out of the box, quite brutally, but just tearing this box to bits. <laughs> Sorry about this. And I'll show you how the, the daisy chain. And I really I really love how they do uh, do this with these fans. And I've, obviously there's loads of other fans out there that now do it. And they've all kind of jumped on the bandwagon with Lee and Lee. But I think, I think Lee and Lee were the first to do this, uh, have the daisy chain option. Just keeps everything so clean with uh, less clutter with all these additional cables. And just pop this one out of its bag. And it should be just a case of slipping them together. You can see here at the side that it's keyed. Like a male and female end if you want to call it that. Spoke too soon, maybe it's not as easy as I think. No, just push it in and then click into position and that's that's the two of them joined, it's that easy. If you want to just pop them back out, you just do the same again, just push them away from each other. And just get the keys located and then push them down and it locks in. So good looking, so clean. And then obviously you'd have your, your cable hooking onto the end. 
But again, and you'll be sick of hearing me saying this, I'm going to be using these ones that come with the, the SL120 Infinity additional um, controller that I'm going to be using. And I'll just try and get one of these cables out of the box for you and we'll have a look at it, hopefully. So this should be pretty easy to slip on as well. Again, it should be keyed and only goes in the one way, which you, hopefully you can see from the camera here. I should just locate and then push it down to lock it in. Or well, maybe I get this around the wrong way. And indeed I have. That's how stupid I am. So yep, just locate it into the slots and then push to lock it in position and that's that. Easy as that. Another nice little feature that Lee and Lee have is you can actually pop this cover off. If you're not happy with the way that the cables are leaning uh, basically being guided to, so at the moment it's obviously guided to the right hand side, but you might have a, an opening in your case when you're needing this to pop to the left, just take off this cover and then you can flip the cables over like so, stick the little cover back on, which again you just push down, should just push down, yep, and you just push it back into place again, it just locks back into position and Again, that's such a such a clever design by Lee and Lee. Obviously helps when it comes to having your PC looking its best. And now on to the installation. First things first, we're going to remove these existing brackets in the motherboard and use the same screws. This is a bracket here that comes with the AIO cooler and just pay attention to the way these arrows point. Need to be pointing in towards the CPU. So one's going to go here. We'll screw that down using the existing screws. And obviously the same again the other side. Just a copy of the, the first one, simple. And that's the new brackets installed. Not a lot to it really. I actually panicked a little bit because I was worried about the, I don't know if you can see here, how close this is to these, I'm not quite sure what these are, capacitors, diodes, whatever. I'm not too familiar with what these parts are. VRMs, I'm not sure, but it was hell of a close, but I suppose, I suppose this motherboard and these brackets are designed just to make sure that there is a clearance, but needless to say, I did shit myself, I was going to crush them. <laughs> I've already installed the rest of the fans, so don't worry about that. But the plan is now to top mount the radiator like so, using the included screws and washers that came with the AIO. And now we'll just get the pump head itself installed. And... Hopefully in this orientation with the hoses at the bottom as recommended by Lane Lee. We've got four slots here which will locate on the screws. Uh, you can see on the brackets here. Obviously when you're tightening this you do opposite corners. Just tighten them slowly. And again here it's just showing you the AMD screws with little dots. Excuse my scabby nails. But make sure that you use these ones. So that's the pump head now in place. And at the side here, you can see a couple of cables. One is the USB type C, which is looped through the top of the case, down the bottom, and it's going to connect into a spare USB header down here next to the power switch. Second cable is the AIO header cable, which is attached to the AIO header, obviously, on the motherboard. If you can see that, just push out the side. I've now connected up the CPU fan header cable and if I turn the case around to the back you'll see that that leads to the new um, SL Infinity 120 controller that I was talking about earlier. You can see that's plugged in there. We've also got a USB cable and which plugs into a US, sorry, an NZXT internal USB hub that I need to use because I, I've not got enough headers on the motherboard. It needs a SATA power connection, which you can see here, as does the SL Infinity um, controller. So plenty of SATA power connections needed. Also, going to this little um, controller is the, the cables from the fans themselves, obviously. So we've got a three AIO fans up the top here and then we've got a one fan to the back these go into separate ports and then at the bottom we have another two ports one for the three fans at the side here and then obviously the one at the bottom again what else have we got this case um, has got lots and lots of LED lighting the Fantex NV5 it's got um, RGB kit and stuff which comes with this little 
RGB hub. I need to power this up again with SATA, um, and it's got the, the connections leading to the, the, the different RGB lighting within the case. But at the side here, there's an input cable, which is normally attached to the buttons on the top of the PC, but I want everything to be controlled by L-Connect 3 to just, just to simplify things. And this cable is actually connecting into one of the spare ports on this controller, and that's the, the reason I bought this. Fingers crossed it all works. All being well, you should now have an installation which looks like this. And this is how it all looks in my Fantex NV5 case. So up the top you can see the radiator is just a beautiful thickness, or perfect thickness, but it just sits to the, the edge of the border of the glass, and then those infinity mirrored fans just sit below it so you can get to see them in all their glory. We've got a fan at the back there which is acting as an exhaust. We can see the 45 degree rotatory connections to the side of the radiator. The three reverse blade fans acting as an intake and then another reverse blade fan at the bottom acting as an intake over here is my little screen mod that I've done uh, my system monitor sensor panel whatever you want to call it and I've got a video for that if you're interested in watching it just above that um, we also have my 3D printed logo which always finds a place in all side, inside all my cases just sitting in front of my 4070 Super TI, or 4070 Ti Super I should say, sorry and then up to the pump head itself, absolutely stunning looking, look at that everything just looks great and what I'll do now is show you how to get all the the software and everything set up and show you how that goes so as once you've got all the equipment installed the first thing you're going to want to do is head over to the Lee and Lee website to download the software so I'll show you exactly how to do that Yep, so just head over to lianlee.com here, um, go to the product tab up the top, go down to cooling, AIO coolers, and you'll see a list of the coolers that uh, Lee and Lee currently do. For us, we're going for the Galahad 2 LCD, so you click on that, and then in the down, uh, the bottom corner here on the right hand side, you'll see download L Connect 3. That will take you to a page, and scroll down a little bit. And it's just a case of clicking that button, downloading the software and then installing it. And as once as that's installed, you should be then greeted with a page similar to this. And just switch over. So this is your Lee and Lee Connect 3 um, software. I'll just go through the tabs one at a time. So up the top we have System Info, tells you your CPU temps and so on. Then the uh, fan speeds, all the kind of usual information you would expect to seeing software like this, storage of your drives and so on and then up here we've also got your system specs gives you a, a list of everything you should have within your PC for me I am on the uh, the AMD Ryzen 9 5900X and you can see my graphics card, motherboard, memory, so on, monitors and storage devices down the bottom so it's quite handy for that um, actually I should say before we go any further one thing I would recommend that you should do before you get this software installed is actually go to the settings and then go over to update and um, just check that you've got the most up-to-date software or the most up-to-date version of L Connect 3 but I'd imagine you would if you're just downloading it straight from the website and also double check that you have the latest um, the so uh, firmware sorry firmware uh, installed on your your equipment you've just installed such as your controller and uh, the actual Galahad pump itself so just double check those things before going any further um, back to the tabs up here, so system info we've got fan and pump profile um, if you've played about with AIO coolers and stuff like that before and set fan covers you'll know what this is all about but on the controller itself there's four ports uh, which you can see up here and you can actually individually set them to different RPMs so for instance the one that's purely on the, the AIO cooler itself you could maybe change that to have a higher RPM because that's basically going to control the the temperature of your uh, your CPU and then you can leave the rest at maybe a lower RPM so that the, the case isn't as noisy but there's, there's plenty of uh, things you can adjust in here for me I've got the fan profile set on standard at the moment but you can see that there's some standard ones down here uh, you can go with quiet, higher speed, full speed and so on um, but standard for me is, is fine uh, CPU temps currently at 52 degrees must admit that's something I've kind of I'll need to have a wee look at um, on the previous cooler that I had, which was only a, a 240 cooler. 
Um, the kind of idle temperature was much lower, but I think that's maybe just to do with the fan curve, which I haven't touched at all down here, but I'm sure if I played around with that, I, I could change this. I should also point out that the pump uh, is on a, a quiet profile, um, which you can see here. You can change that as well to a standard profile or like full performance profile, which obviously gives it a bit more noise, but this temperature should, should come down a bit. But ultimately, it's all about when it's under load. That's For me, that's what I'm looking for, that this thing stays cool under load. Uh, quick lighting sync button over here. This is basically like a, a one-stop, one I don't know what you would call it, a one-stop button, I suppose you would you would call this, to have everything within your case Leon, uh, that's controlled under Lian Lee Connect 3, basically the same RGB if you want to do it that way, and it's, it's just a case of choosing what you want from here. Um, you can see the, the different options, rainbow, rainbow morph, static colour and so on. But I'm going to go into these individually. Um, I'm, I'm not really wanting them all to be the same. Well, actually, now that I say that, I think, I think they are actually all the same. But anyway, just to show you that you can you can basically change everything on, under the, the quick sync lighting tab here. And it changes everything in one go. And you can also change the direction of the lights. Um, first thing I'll do is I'll show you the LCD because I think that's probably the the main reason you're going to buy this thing is purely for this LCD and there's lots of options in here. So again up the top we can change the screen, we can change the screen LEDs which is down the side and the fan LED we're not going to bother about because that will come under the, the SL Infinity utility thing here but the main two is the screen and the screen LED. So again and hopefully you can see that on the screen at the moment, um, I, I currently have this set up here. Um, and this is my like a, an old intro of mine that I've just added in with the CPU temp and the coolant temp. Um, you can add different effects to this, or change the effects if you want. We've got a kind of raining effect uh, over here. You can change it from static to dynamic, and you can change the intensity of the rain. And this kind of applies to um, all the different backgrounds. The background itself, you can change the logo if you want and put your own picture on. Um, and you can also uh, basically put text and stuff in here. So at the moment I've got a geo sensor which shows you the CPU load and the coolant temp, but there's also an option of a slide sensor which uh, will go from, well, you can pick here, you can see the ones that you can pick. So if we want to do CPU temp, and then let's go for coolant temp, and you can change that to a five second loop, and you should see it goes from CPU temp, give it five seconds, and it should then change the coolant temp as well. Um, is that going to do that for me? Yeah, so you can see the coolant temp's changed over there as well. Now it's changed the coolant temp and it's showing you the current coolant temp. For the text, again, you can change your colours here. You can pick all sorts of different colours. For the CPU text, the actual number and then we've also got um, the little Celsius text in the bottom. You can change your colours and make them whatever you want. Full of different variations. It's, it's pretty customizable. Uh, so I'll just quickly take you through the other ones. There's Meteors. Um, again, under that you can change the colours. So I've kind of got that set to you know, purple and blue, which matches the colour theme of my case at the moment. Um, and we can change the speed that the Meteors are coming down. Again, we can put a background image in if you want text. So this this kind of repeats through all of them. Um, so snow effect, there's a little fireworks effect, and you can change the colours of the fireworks if you want. Twist hole, scope. So you can see for yourself, I'm not going to bore you and go through them all. You can put a time on if you want. Um, flying welding's quite a good one. Um, you can actually put whatever text you want in, so you can go to this tab here and put in all different texts for it to, and I think it changes every time you add something else, it adds something in, um, says, Lou, that helps if I can spell right, but, Rizzy says hello, it should change every time that the text comes in, it should change to the next one. Yeah, there you go, so you can do that, but the main thing I think everybody's going to come here for is imaging video. 
And what's good about this is you can you can download uh, videos and add your own. So you can see here you can add your own photos and your own videos. Um, and then you can edit them. I've got a few. You can already see with my logo and stuff like that. But there's a really, really neat feature. Um, and you can actually like clip a video from anything, anything online. You could open up a YouTube video uh, and you go to screen capture if you want a picture or you go to screen recording if you want an MP4. And that's exactly what I did to get this. I opened up a an old um, intro of mine from a previous YouTube video and I, I basically done a screen recording. And what happens is, is you get a pop-up like this coming up um, in a little box down the bottom here. And that's a maximum of three minutes you, you can record for. So just in case of clicking that button, as much as you're happy with what you've recorded, you then hit this tick button and you can export it straight to your, your screen. So uh, I'll actually just show you just now, even though this isn't a video, I'll show you. So we've got that coming up and we'll stop it there. It's six seconds, hit a green tick and then we import it straight to the screen and you should see my screen changing in the background there. And it's hard to see, but it is, it's basically the back of the woman's, the woman's head, you can see there. It's probably not the best example to show you, but it, it is her hair. Um, but that's that bit. Uh, over here we have the screen LED, and my, this is obviously the LEDs that run down the side. So I currently have mine set a, a nice purple colour. But again, you've got all the different functions. You've got rainbow, rainbow morph, breathing. Uh, the runway, again, I've set it to kind of colours that kind of match my case. Um, meteor, there's all there's all sorts of different functions there again, or effects I should say. I keep saying functions, but it should be effects, which are nice. Uh, big Bang. Burst. Colour Morphs, it's really nice. So much, so much choice. Uh, but again, for me, I have just went with a static colour and I've set it to a purple to match the fans in the case as well. Uh, again, down the bottom here we have some profiles, fan profiles set at standard, but we'll get into that again when we get into the SL Infinity Utility. And then we've got pump profile, which means is currently set at quiet. And I think that's everything saved there. What you can do is once you've got everything set up and you're happy with it, you can then export that and save it. Um, and then you can play about with it. And if you're not happy with it, you can import it back into the settings that you had before as well, which is quite a nice feature. Now on to the SL, Inf uh, SL Infinity Utility. Uh, what I've done, I've just repositioned the, the camera pointing at my PC just now so you can see it on the fans. But basically this is your four ports that I showed you earlier on. It's on the Infinity controller. These can all be controlled individually, so you can basically set up these four ports to be individually coloured, if you want to call it that. Um, the LEDs around the edge, the LEDs around the fan, and this can be completely different from these fans. And what you would do is you would go in, um, and down the bottom here you can see there's lighting effects here, so for port 1, uh, in fact let me just see what port I'm on here. Um, yeah, sorry, I'm just double checking what port I'm on, so I can record the proper ones. So you can see this is port 4, which is the intake fans in the side of my case. And change those to Rainbow, Rainbow Morph. Again, it's all the kind of same effects as we've, as we've already seen with the LCD screen. Breathing, Rainbow, Meteor Mix, you name it, there's, there's hundreds of different effects there, and they're all really, really good looking. Door. Disco, blah blah blah, so on. I'm not going to bore you with those. Um, but if we go back to port one on the screen here, that's still the static color that I had set up. And if you click on any port and you're wanting to actually set that across all of them, it's just a case of going down to the bottom here, hitting apply to all, and it should change everything back to the way you want it to be. Little glitch. In the software I can see here, even though I've hit apply to all, you can still see that the graphic is showing you as if there's a rainbow effect on the LED, so I'm not quite sure what's wrong with that, but you can see on the screen, oh, sorry, you can actually see 
uh, from the camera view of my case, that's not that's not what's happening. It's actually set it to the same as the rest of the, the ports. I uh, don't know what else we can cover here. Obviously, you can change the brightness as well if you wanted to do that. And for me, you can see that the, the outside LEDs are a different colour from the inside LEDs uh, on the actual fan blades themselves. And you can actually do that in here. This little drop down here is currently set to the fan LED. And then if you want to, you can change the static colour of that so it's just blue, as you've seen the screen just now. And then on the outside, you can change it to all these different colours. And you can see how that's came in as blue, red, green, uh, and a kind of lime green. Uh, in fact, sorry, I've clicked the wrong one. That's for both inside and outside. If you only want the outside the LED, you click that. Apologies about that. If you um, and then again, if you want the fan LEDs, you click that. But if you want all of it, both LEDs, you can click this and you can set that so that they're all the same. But we'll just go back to that. Hit <laughs> apply to all and it sets it back to the way that I like it. Down here as well, you can set the quantity of fans. It's, and the reason you want to do this is just to make sure that they, when you are using any motion effects, that it kind of looks the part. Um, there's not, just for talk's sake, you've maybe got um, lights. You want to, the effect to start from the back of the case, go along the top, down the side, and then to the bottom. You want to set the number of fans, and you can do that in here. You basically pick the amount of fans that are in each of the ports. So. It's pretty self-explanatory, you can see that from on the screen here. And I think that is everything covered, guys. Yep. So the last thing I wanted to show you guys is this thing performing under the Cinebench stress test. So just hop over to that just, uh, to that just now. And hopefully on the screen you can see that this is just coming up for the end of the 10 minute test. And on the camera pointing at the PC, you should see that the CPU temp is our CPU package is 60 degrees and the coolant temp is 31 so it's only went up by what's that, about seven or uh, yeah about seven or eight degrees from idle um, which is great great performance that's basically what you want again just to remind you the fans are on a standard profile and the pump is on a quiet profile so I'm pretty sure if you played around with these um, those temps that you're seeing on the screen just now would actually come down but I thought this would be the last thing I'd show you anyway, so how this thing performs after a, a 10 minute stress test. That round of applause is for you if you've actually managed to stay to this, uh, this bit of the video. Um, it's been a bit of a slog, but anyway, hopefully yeah, you've enjoyed it. That was the unboxing, installation, a kind of walkthrough of the software and a little performance test at the end of the Lee and Lee Galahad 2 LCD SL360 Infinity. Hope you like this guys, as always please leave a like and subscribe if you can, share the videos as much as possible um, and I'll see you again soon, see you later.